Good day! I'm Maria Cristina de las Liagas, and this is part 2 of our lecture on transcription. Today, we will be focusing on the synthesis and processing of ribosomal and transfer RNAs. Hopefully, by the end of this lecture, you would be able to describe how ribosomal and transfer RNAs are synthesized, as well as compare the organization of the genes that code for the large ribosomal RNA and the tRNAs within the vertebrate genome. There are millions of ribosomes in a eukaryotic cell. Each of these ribosomes are consist of ribosomal RNA and ribosomal proteins. The DNA sequence encoding the ribosomal RNA are called rDNA. And typically, you will find this clustered in the genome. In order to make a large number of rRNA transcripts, this DNA sequences, called the rDNA, are normally repeated hundreds of times. When the cells are not dividing, the rDNA are clustered in the nucleoli where ribosomal subunits are produced. In this micrograph of two human HeLa cells, you will find the ribosomal proteins in green. Meanwhile, the arrows point to the nucleoli where the clusters of rDNA are gathered. This is an electron micrograph showing a section or a portion of a nucleus with a nucleolus. Here you will see three distinct nucleolar regions that can be distinguished morphologically. The bulk of the nucleolus, which is that dark region there, is consists of the GC or the granular component. Based on this model, the GC would contain ribosomal subunits in various stages of assembly. Embedded within the granular region are the fibrillar centers or FC, as well as the DFC, which stands for dense fibrillar component. It is believed that the fibrillar center would contain the DNA that codes for the ribosomal RNA, while the dense fibrillar center contains the nascent pre-RNA transcripts. This is a drawing showing the components present in each of the subunits of a mammalian ribosome. For eukaryotic ribosomes, they have four distinct ribosomal RNAs. Three are found in the large subunit, and these are the 5S ribosomal RNA, 5.8S ribosomal RNA, and the 28S ribosomal RNA. And one is found in the small subunit, which is the 18S ribosomal RNA. Three of these ribosomal RNAs came from a single primary transcript, which we call as the pre-ribosomal RNA. And it's carved out from this pre-ribosomal RNA through various nucleases. And these are the 28S, 18S, and the 5.8S ribosomal RNAs. Meanwhile, the 5S ribosomal RNA came from a different RNA transcript located outside the nucleolus. To understand how ribosomal RNA precursor are synthesized, amphibian eggs are very useful models. It's because they are large and they also have many nucleoli. I guess this is only expected since large number of nucleoli are really needed once the egg is fertilized in making ribosomes later on, which are essential for embryonic development. So this light micrograph of an isolated nucleus from a Xenopus oocyte is stained in order to show the hundreds of nucleoli.
This is an electron micrograph of a segment of DNA isolated from one of the nucleoli from a xenopus oocyte. Here you can see the DNA. These are the thread lighting that you'll see there. And sequences of that DNA that is responsible for forming ribosomal RNAs are what we call as the ribosomal DNA. Notice that there are several repeats of that gene to form ribosomal RNA. So this is one, here's another one, and here's another one, and there's another one. So the ribosomal RNA genes are therefore arranged in tandem. Dangling from the DNA would be threads of various lengths, and these are the nascent RNA molecules. And because of the various lengths here, some are shorter than the rest, it resembles a Christmas tree. There are also portions of the DNA that is not transcribed, and these are the non-transcribed spacer, and it separates the transcription units in a ribosomal gene cluster. So this is a non-transcribed spacer, and this is, a, this is a transcription unit, and this is another transcription unit. Here is a closer view of the ribosomal DNA that is being transcribed. And more evident here would be the presence of the dots found at the base of each of the fibrils. And take note, the fibrils are the nascent, these are the fibrils. The fibrils are your nascent ribosomal RNA molecules. And those dots that you see there are actually the RNA polymerase. Here is another look at the RNA transcription unit. So this drawing here shows the appearance of a portion of your DNA from the nucleolus as it is transcribed into ribosomal RNA. And the lower drawing or illustration here shows one of the transcription unit that codes for the ribosomal RNA in Xenopus here and also in mouse. So the parts that are transcribed are shown in yellow and also in green, while the non-transcribed portion of the DNA is shown in blue here. So the yellow ones are the regions, the transcribed regions that are eventually degraded during RNA processing, while those that will become part of the mature ribosomal RNA product is shown in green here. The processing of the pre-ribosomal RNA is accomplished with the help of a large number of small nucleolar RNAs, otherwise known as snow RNAs. And these are packaged with proteins to form a particle called the snow RNPs, or the small nucleolar ribonucleoproteins. One of the modifications that the snow RNAs would do would be to convert uridine to pseudouridine at 95 sites. And they're also involved in ribose methylation. Let's talk about transfer RNAs. Plant and animal cells are estimated to have approximately around 50 different species of transfer RNA, and each of these are encoded by a repeated DNA sequence. The degree of repetition would vary from one organism to another. Example, in yeast, there could be a total of about 275 tRNA genes for fruit flies, 850, and for humans, around 1,300. The transfer RNAs are synthesized from genes that are found in small clusters scattered around the genome. 
and a single cluster typically contains multiple copies of different transfer RNA genes. The DNA sequence encoding a given transfer RNA is typically found in more than one cluster. And the DNA within a cluster is consists largely of non-transcribed spacer sequences with the transfer RNA coding sequences located at irregular intervals in a tandemly repeated arrangement. And just like that of ribosomal RNA, primary transcript, the tRNA, um, well, are transcribed by RNA polymerase 3, and the promoter sequence would lie within the coding section of the gene rather than being located at the 5' prime flanked. And the primary transcript of a transfer RNA molecule is larger than the final product. And pieces on both the 5' prime and 5' prime sides of the precursor transfer RNA are trimmed down to form the final transfer RNA molecule. Of course, there are numerous bases that are modified and all of these are possible with the help of enzymes involved in pre-transfer RNA processing. Example would be endonucleases like the ribonuclease P, which is present both in bacterial and eukaryotic cells, and it consists of both RNA and protein subunits. In fact, it is the RNA subunit of the ribonuclease P that is responsible for catalyzing the cleavage of the pre-transfer RNA substrate. So this basically transfer RNA processing involves removal, addition, and chemical modification of nucleotides. Cells synthesize several dozen kinds of transfer RNA molecules, and each of these are designed to bring a particular amino acid to one or more codons in messenger RNA. However, all tRNA molecules share a common general structure. A mature transfer RNA molecule would contain around 70 to 90 nucleotides, and some of these are chemically modif modified. Base pairing between complementary sequences located in different regions will cause each of your transfer RNA molecule to fold into a secondary structure containing several hairpin loops. Most transfer RNAs have a four base paired regions and in some RNAs there's a fifth region which is referred to as the variable loop. The tRNA secondary structure is usually called a clover leaf structure because it resembles a clover leaf when drawn in two dimensions. However, if you are going to take a look at the normal three-dimensional tertiary structure, the molecule will be seen to be folded so that the overall shape actually resembles the letter L instead of being simply clover shaped. So this is a diagram, an illustration showing the processing and secondary structure of the transfer RNA. So here you will see that the transfer RNA is synthesized actually in a precursor form and processing of the pre-transfer RNA molecules would involve several different events and these are labeled as 1, 2, 3, and 4 in this illustration. So let's start with number 1. Um, here, the yeast tyrosine transfer RNA will undergo processing. 
So in number one, at the five prime end, there is a short leader sequence of 16 nucleotides, and this is removed from the pre-transfer RNA. In step two, at the three prime end, the two terminal nucleotides of the pre-transfer RNA are removed and these are replaced with trinucleotide CCA, which is a common structural feature of all transfer RNA molecules. And in step three, um, in a typical transfer RNA molecule, about 10 to 15 percent of the nucleotides are chemically modified during pre-transfer RNA processing. And the principal modification would include methylation of the bases and the sugar, and therefore creating unusual bases also like dihydrouracil or ribothymine or pseudouridine and even inosine. The processing of the yeast tyrosine tRNA is also characterized in step number four by the removal of an internal 14 nucleotide sequence. Now take note, although the transcripts for most transfer RNAs do not actually require this kind of excision. An internal segment of RNA transcript that must be removed to create a mature RNA product is what you call as the RNA intron. And this wraps up our discussion on the synthesis of ribosomal and transfer RNAs. In the next video, we will be talking about the synthesis and processing of messenger RNA molecules. Thank you for listening.